Ready? Um, hi, I'm Ann Stecco. I'm at California State University Chico in the Technology and Learning Program. Today I'm here for the TILT session with Dr. Cindy Radican from uh, the Child Development Department. Um, we're going to be presenting on doing student presentations online with, oh, excuse me, grading portfolios collaboratively in VISTA. We're going to do first today, mm -hmm. um, where Cindy's going to talk a little bit about an issue that they had in their department because they have multiple papers that have to be graded by multiple instructors. And they were trying to figure out a way that they could do this rather smoothly. And I believe she's going to explain some of the methods they went through and what they thought was going to be a really big project ended up being something very manageable by mm -hmm. using Blackboard Vista. And today that's what we're going to tell you a little bit about. So uh, Dr. Radican, take it away. Thank you, Ann. Well, today I'm going to speak about the uh, the process of grading portfolios with all faculty members. And this began, I believe it was a, a year ago in the fall. And first I'll explain what we use our portfolios for. We have students complete senior portfolios as part of the uh, university assessment process. Uh, all, all of the programs have what we call student learning outcomes and each program grades those and evaluates those in different ways. And what we have been doing, probably we realized yesterday in a faculty meeting that we've been doing this for about 15 years, was a physical portfolio. And the way that this was organized was that we have six specific learning outcomes for students that we assess on. And so in our senior seminar, which students take in their very last semester, the way that this is organized is that we actually have seven, seven faculty members in our department, and I'm the one that organizes the class, so I'm the primary faculty. And then each of the other six faculty, as part of an AW, uh, AWTU release, take one of the outcomes, one of the six outcomes, and they, they go through that process, and they, um, they, they take responsibility for it. So. All seven of us are involved in this, and there's a lot of positive aspects about that. We didn't want to lose it because it was a nice group project that we were able to do and to get some academic credit for, but at the same time, it was becoming really complicated. So what we had was a senior portfolio that had six sections. Each section was a two or three page narrative along with two pieces, an attachment, you know, a, 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 a actual physical paper or assignment that students would turn in as documentation of their progress. So what they were asked to do, for instance, the first one is about foundations, theoretical foundations of child development. And what students were asked to do was to consider how they had changed through their higher education experience, whether it was in child development courses or other related courses, whether it was our university or community college, how they change their thinking, and often we do this with scenarios. For instance, a child throws sand in another child's face and then runs away screaming, and which, what's your response? And students would respond as a freshman in their initial child development course in writing, and then we would ask the same questions to them as they were seniors. And they often didn't even remember what they wrote the first time, but they would have a chance to reflect on this difference in what they did and um, talk about which classes and what learning influenced that process. So that's the process. To get, the, to get it in a hard copy, students would write, find those assignments, collect them, turn them in, and there would be a physical um, portfolio that was graded. Um, Um, one faculty member was assigned to each, that, and that involves the six portfolios. And when it came time to actually begin the structure of the portfolio, students would come into this, I mean, faculty would come in to talk to the students um, for about an hour and a half about this foundation or about this assessment area or somehow with the SLO, talk about what they would like to see. It, you know, most, most of the students already knew the faculty member, but this was their opportunity to look at them again. Hear, what, hear how it was going to be graded. Um, they, would, they all present grading rubrics, which are different for every portfolio. They respond to questions. And then one of our favorite parts is they give a, a piece of graduation, graduation advice to the seniors. So it's a nice cumulative class. We liked the structure very much, but the problem was in grading the um, portfolios. What would happen in the grading is that um, the students turned in hard copies of these big old binders. And 
you know, we have 42 students in the class this semester. So there was no place to keep them other than the department office. And so there would be 42 binders that would show up. They would be checked in. You know, students would bring them in pieces. So, so the department secretary had to deal with these 42 binders. Then they had to be left available to faculty because faculty have two weeks to grade just their section. There was some organization of the paperwork involved with, you know, me being the primary faculty would have to, you know, say who's graded what and where's the section for comments. And if it was too bulky and too many papers, they would get lost. So we ended up with about this much space to write comments back to the to the students in, and so we would be grading and then, you know, sharing the, the, the portfolios and grading on a single document. Then after it was all done, which most of us ended up there on the weekend before finals week because we kept thinking we were going to get time to go to the department office, and we didn't, and then we would all be there on a Sunday um, grading these, and then I would have to quickly put them in the grade book so the students could pick them up. Then the department secretary would have to manage the picking up the portfolios. It became very difficult. So probably after 13 years of this, what we decided to do in our own wisdom as child development faculty who, who are not that sophisticated with, with different kinds of um, online kinds of VISTA options, decided we needed to go to electronic portfolio. So I was given some time to carve out. I saved a couple weeks in the summer, um, made an appointment at that point in time. I didn't know Anne yet, but went to Anne and said, here's the issue, you know, the, the inconveniences. And, and actually, I didn't even structure it this way. I basically just said, we need to learn how to do electronic portfolios. I'd already decided on the problem. And so she asked me to um, describe what we were doing, and I did, and so I told her why we were switching over. So um, I figured it would take about a couple weeks for me to learn how to do the electronic portfolios, and then another period of time training the child development faculty. So I explained the problem to her, and I said, I wrote here on my, late, on my slide, 10 minutes after explaining the issues to Anne, the problem was solved in a very simple way. And um, what we decided to do is that there really was not a need. We were getting a big O tool for something that needed a really small solution. She didn't feel like we really needed electronic portfolio. She really felt like what we were doing was fine as it is. The issue was it was the grading and the management of the physical portfolio. So what we ended up with is all processes remain the same. The grading rubrics are the same, all those kinds of things, except for a couple things. One of them is that me as a primary faculty uh, member allowed um, the other six people to come into my course as guest designers. That worked for our program. I'm not sure it would work for everybody. It worked fine for us. And then for each of them, I established a folder in a particular area on the VISTA course that had specifically to do with the area that they were teaching. So there were six folders there, one for each faculty member. Before their presentation, the faculty members upload their grading rubric. They upload any of their PowerPoints that they're going to use for the hour and a half presentation. And I audio tape with a, a digital tape recorder their presentation, which sometimes we had, we had to figure out how to do that too, but then in a very easy way to upload that particular thing too. So the students have this wonderful access to the grading rubrics, which we used to do physical copies with, the PowerPoints and, and the audio presentation of the person who's going to grade that section. That's the only time they see them during that time. But they're, they also explain that they're available during their office hours. Then I created drop boxes for each of those assignments. So um, as, a, as a faculty member, that was the primary person. So when the first SLO is done, I, there's a, a drop box, SLO1. And, the students write their narrative and they find their two pieces of documentation, their assignments that they would like to attach. And they, we have a scanner in our computer lab and we show them how to scan it if they usually know how to do that. So what they do is they just attach those three pieces to the assignment drop box. Then Dr. Glanville can go in there any time before finals week, in the middle of the night, first thing in the morning, and he can grade those 42 assignments at his luxury. We also learn how to do grading rubrics, which I mean, it's unbelievable the amount of time that it saved. Plus, we have unlimited space to write comments. And um, it also allows individuality, though, because everybody's grading rubric is different. We weight them differently. We've tried to do some things consistent, like whether they go from low to high and those kinds in the same direction. But all the individuality 
of the specific faculty, the six specific faculty members is maintained. We used to have one grading rubric for everything because we didn't feel like we could have six. But because we're using grading forms, it works out beautifully. Then there's no physical portfolios. So students submit this, and then they get it back electronically at some point in time. They're all due by finals week. And so there's no physical paper. There's more comments. There's more individuality because of the different grading forms. You know, faculty ex report extremely high satisfaction with this process compared to what we used to do. And not even, not even our faculty needed training on that process. <laughs> we, I mean, I put the grading forms in, but it, it was almost effortless. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was pushing myself on that. <laughs> pushing the green button. Um, I'm curious, if you had um, five other faculty or six other Six faculty, other ones. Mm -hmm. um, working with you in your course, you created a grading group, um, the grading form in place of rubric for them, or did each of them do a grading rubric? Well, they do their own grading rubric. What I haven't figured out how to do, and maybe there is a way to do it, is to I think the grading rubrics have, I just typed it into the grading form. I wasn't able to figure out how to just upload a grading rubric. Okay, good. And I also couldn't, well, so I just typed it in. It was really easy. And then once I had it, it transferred over quickly. And so they gave it, they, we, we have the rubric posted. So the students have that all semester. And then when they get their assignment back, it's got a grading form on it. I think this is a wonderful solution. I, I was only kind of hope, hopeful that if the six other faculty created their own grading form that maybe then they learned to do that and they're using it in their other vista courses but well, and, it, and it's really, I mean, as soon as they do it, all you have to do is type it in. And, but they all learn, they all use the grading form so they know how to use it now. One of the, one of the mistakes we made, or maybe it wasn't necessarily a mistake, but it didn't really work is if a student doesn't, if you're using an assignment that has a grading form based, if you don't have a zero, then they have to have something. Like say you give one point for somebody who has poor spelling or something like that. So when we total up the 15 points of that rubric, it, it has to have a minimum number if you've assigned a one at the lowest. So for instance, it would be three, one for each of those. So for a student who didn't turn in anything, I had to give them three points. Then I had to go back into the grade book and just overwrite it and put a zero. But that was minor, and we made that. I think that was the only change we made. Although people quickly, that was the other thing, is the faculty members, as soon as we started doing it like that, they could see things they wanted to edit themselves about the process. Where before, when we were using one grade, grading rubric, you know, and we had things like spelling and content and things like that, it just stayed that way for 13 years. And then when people had the you know, the opportunity to create their own. They're getting very specific, so the grading's really tightened up. We made that one change, and I just asked them to, when they created a rubric, to actually have zeros on it. And now everybody does, and I mean, it's, we, one semester, by the second semester, the faculty understood the process completely. I would say total the amount of time they need to take for doing this. They do the hour and a half presentation, and I would say it probably may, maybe takes two hours for them to grade it. Before, it was so much more time just because of the management of the materials. And the department secretary is so happy she doesn't have those 42 portfolios hanging around in her office, taking up the board table, you know. So the next slide was what was learned by this process. Two major things. <laughs> An important first step is to explore ideas with actually TLP staff or other people who understand VISTA and electronic resources before you decide on your solution. Because without that, we would have created some kind of a process that really took away a lot of what we had that was working and would have required a lot of hours and training and those kinds of things. The second thing is that sometimes change isn't nearly as complicated as you anticipate. I'm not sure why the six of us with PhD sitting around a table didn't think of the solution. But I think what happens is you're just so busy and you just it's the way we've always done it. And until we actually went down and spoke of it, we had this incredibly simple solution that we could have even thought about if we would have been, I don't know, out of box or something. And then it was almost embarrassing to come back and say, well, I had two weeks to do this, but it only took 15 minutes. I mean, that usually isn't the way it happens. Usually it takes more time. So 
a real simple solution, an extremely smooth process with little to no training, and we have happy faculty and happy office personnel. So thank you to Anne for asking the right questions so that we could solve this problem. Thanks, Cindy, for You're coming. welcome. Does anyone else have any questions today? And actually, we have Tom from San Luis Obispo, and if Tom, if you're there, if you have any questions, I know you're probably not using a block, uh, Blackboard Vista, but Blackboard uh, Classic, but feel free to talk about the process, because this was a instructional design problem and solution, and uh, uh, anyway, we welcome all questions. Oh, good. We got her chiming in. Um, Cindy, one of the things I think was really valuable for me to hear mm -hmm. was um, the physical changes that were, um, you know, that were going on in your department were minimized. I really Fabulous. enjoyed that part. I enjoyed the part about the secretary because <laughs> I come from an era where I, I graded report cards in a very similar fashion where all mm -hmm. the, the faculty would go into a room and you physically mark the marks <laughs> on the paper. I mean, that's revealing how old I am. Uh, but it was a mess, and it takes a lot of uh, choreography. The other mm -hmm. thing that I think is really good is you were able to put your priorities in the right place, and that was on the student content and the mm -hmm. learning outcomes, rather than on all the complicated methods that you needed to have um, mm -hmm. with all the paperwork. So thanks again for coming in today. You're welcome. Um, Thanks for your help. This is uh, the uh, technology and learning and teaching session here at California State University Chico. And um, be sure to come back again on another Wednesday where we'll have many, many more presentations for you. Okay. And we'll do your next one. Thank now. you.